I got five reasons why you should not bring a car to the UK if you're an American. Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Mac. So I want to talk to you really quickly today about some of the things that I've been going through personally and some things that you should consider if you're an American moving to the UK. So a lot of people don't know, you can bring a car over. I did, we brought two over. And that was really good because it allowed us to not have to move into a new market that we didn't know and try to buy a car. We didn't know the pricing, we didn't know the market. We also didn't have UK bank accounts when we first got here and we didn't have a permanent address, which make it almost impossible to buy a car. So I can understand if you would like to ship a car over. Um, Of course, you're gonna be driving, you'll be inverse from everyone else on the highway. And so that's something you had to consider and you had to think about. I don't have an issue with that so much. I haven't had much of a problem with it. I'm left-handed and I think that that may make it a little easier for me when I'm driving and just think about left shoulder, left side to the edge of the road. And that just always is how I mentally keep myself on the right side of the road uh, when I'm when I'm driving. So if you're going to bring a car to the UK from the US, there's some things that you really, really should be aware of and you should really think about. And I'm giving you I hope to be giving you the benefit of my experience and what I've gone through and I would like to share that experience with you and if you're considering the same thing. First, of course, as I mentioned, you're going to be driving inverse from everyone else. Your steering wheel is going to be opposite side of the car from everyone else. Now, just going down the road is not necessarily a problem. It is a problem if you need to try to overtake someone. You won't really be able to do that. Really, if you're driving a US spec car in the UK, you should just consider that overtaking unless you're on a two lane or four lane you know, road that's going in the same direction, uh, you should not consider trying to overtake anyone because your visibility is gonna be severely limited. So that's one. Another thing that you have to consider is if you're going to a drive-through, which the UK doesn't have as many drive-throughs as the US, but if you're going through a drive-through, you're gonna be on the opposite side of the vehicle from the drive-through. The same thing happens and counts for parking garages. When you need to go into a parking garage and you need to take out that ticket, you as a driver are gonna be on the opposite side. Now, typically, my wife is traveling with me and she takes care of you know all of those things from that side of the car. So it's kind of a two person driving tag team. But if you're gonna be driving solo, those are some things that you really need to consider and think about before you bring over a US car. Another thing is the roads here are much smaller. Now, if you're on the interstates, uh, what we call the interstates, uh, but you know, the large motorways here, um, you're gonna to be totally fine. It's when you get to those small towns and those small villages where the navigators just won't fit. The Escalades, the Suburban, your really large Tahoes, uh, your Expeditions, that whole class of vehicles. I have never seen one over here. I'm sure there's some over here somewhere, but really, they're just not, the roads are not made to accommodate really, really large American vehicles. So if you're gonna bring over a vehicle, then I would not suggest bringing over any of the very large American vehicles. I'm talking about when you get to things such as the F-250, the Dooley's and things of that sort. Those are made for the Great American Highway and they don't really work on the Great British Highway in the roadway system. So that may be one that you consider. Another thing to keep in mind is the model and make of the car. So in the car, in the US market, the cars that they sell in the US market are not the same vehicles that they sell in the UK or the European market. So you may run into a problem that we run into with my family we brought over a Honda Odyssey. We brought over two Honda vehicles, which in some ways that's really great because of the sizing fits the highways better, but the models of vehicles that we brought over are not sold here in the UK. So that means we can't get parts for our vehicles. So anytime there's a problem with our vehicle, we have to order the part from the US and get it shipped over. Therein lies the next problem. There are import rules and export rules on some of the parts and the dealers do not like to ship parts overseas. So you can run into some problems with that as well. You may have to find other ways to try to get things shipped or you have to go to a specialized licensed dealer who has the license to ship over vehicle parts. And so that's what I've had to do in a couple cases. I need a battery, but the batteries for UK vehicles are not the same as the batteries for US vehicles. I didn't know this. I just found this out when I had to go and get a battery for our Honda Odyssey. And so I had to go to a special dealer 
who could bring in a US spec vehicle uh, battery. So that's something else that you wanna consider. I'm just kind of rattling down this list because these are all things that I have gone through and personally experienced while trying to drive here in the UK. Now, one thing that I haven't gone through, but I've heard a lot about is that if you have a US spec vehicle and your windshield gets cracked and it's broken and needs to be replaced, they don't have the windshields here. So you would have to order those from the US and then they would have to get shipped in. Then you have to find a special mechanic. And that's another thing. Let me jump to that. So when you need to get your US spec vehicle worked on, there's a few places that can do it, but you have to find the right kind of uh, auto dealer and mechanic who can work on your US spec vehicle. You can't just go to any garage because again, the vehicle makes and models are entirely different. So mechanics are learned and trained to the specs vehicles here in the UK and not to the vehicle specs in the US. So as you can understand what I'm saying, there's a lot of things that you need to consider if you're moving to the UK or you're gonna be here for an extended period and you're, and you're thinking about shipping over a US car. Again, now why would you wanna ship over a US car? In our case, we have a large family. We were concerned about moving into an environment where we wouldn't have a, a vehicle that could accommodate us, myself, my wife, and our four kids. So we shipped over a vehicle uh, we actually sold some vehicles off and then we shipped over two. So there's those things to consider. But what we've run into now is that we're having problems with our vehicle and we're having a hard time getting it repaired because again, it's out of market. The mechanics are really good and talented, the ones that are here. But if I was back in the States, I could just take my vehicle to a Honda dealership. That's not necessarily an option here. So the Honda dealerships that are here can't really work on the US model cars. Now, if you have a Volvo or you have a BMW or Mercedes or a Range Rover, Land Rover, right? If you have a, Euro a European model car, then you'll probably be in a bit better shape uh, if you're gonna ship that vehicle over. Uh, if you were going to ship a vehicle over, I would definitely look into ahead of time thinking about maintenance and thinking about the capabilities of the local mechanics. So if it's a Volvo, I've actually talked to the Volvo dealers and dealerships here in the UK. And I said, hey, if it's a US spec, they said it doesn't matter whether you're in mainland Europe or whether you're here in the UK or whether you're back in the States, uh, our mechanics can work on all of our vehicles. It's the same the world over. So Ford uh, does not do that. The vehicles that Ford sells here are entirely different than the vehicles that are sold in the US market. So that's just another thing to consider as well. Another thing, and there's a lot, I'm sorry, it's a long extensive list, but another thing to consider is that when you ship over a US spec vehicle, it has to be modified upon arrival to make sure that it is qualified to drive on the British highway. So uh, the UK uses different specs for the lights and there are some other different spec requirements that your vehicle will have to be modified. So when we brought our vehicles over, they had to immediately go to a, a shop to have some lights added. They had to have a fog light added and adjusted. So there's just several things that you have to get done to the vehicle when you ship it over. Now, when you ship the vehicle back to the US, if you if you do that, if you ship it over and then ship it back, when you get back to the US, the rules are not so stringent, they're a little different. So you shouldn't have to get the vehicle remodified now back for the US road. But when you ship it here, before you can drive that US spec vehicle on the highway, it will have to be modified to be able to get the license, uh, to get a license plate on the vehicle that has to be modified to meet uh, UK specs to be able to drive on the highway. So that's something else to consider before you ship those vehicles over here. Um, and of course, we're talking about shipping. One thing that we ran into is uh, we shipped our vehicle out of the port of Baltimore. Um, and that in itself was not necessarily hard to get set up. But when they say that they want that vehicle to be clean, they mean clean. I mean clean, 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 clean. We actually had to take our vehicle back two times because the first time we went there, they said this isn't clean enough. Literally, you have someone almost with a white glove walking around that vehicle, looking under the seats, getting down into every nook and cranny and crevice, trying to find any speck of dirt or dust or anything. Uh, and I think it just has to go back with uh, in invasive species where you don't want to be able to transport, you don't want to transport seeds or animals or creatures from one location in one country to another. So they're very stringent about making sure that your vehicle is meticulously, spotlessly clean before you can get it shipped. Also, it can be shipped with a lot of gas in it, so it has to be very low on gas and it has to be meticulously cleaned. It will be reviewed. They're gonna go through it. They're gonna open all the doors. They're gonna raise up those little carpet flaps. They're gonna look in the trunk. They're gonna pop the hood. I've known people who had their cars rejected because it was dirty under the hood. 
So that's something else to just keep in mind. Again, these are not obstacles that are impossible to overcome, but if you're talking about or if you're thinking about shipping a vehicle from the US to the UK, these are just some real serious considerations that you should think about. Um, we didn't have the benefit not of this knowledge before we got here. So hey, if this information is helpful to you, please like this video. If you also like this, subscribe. I'm gonna continue to try to do other videos where I talk about some of the experiences of shipping and living and moving from the US to the UK and try to give you some of the benefit of my experience and what I've experienced uh, in, in the time that I've been here for a bit over a year now. So that's it. Uh, what we're dealing with right now personally is we have a vehicle and uh, we can't figure out what's wrong with it so we may have to buy a new vehicle and for people who watch our videos you know I went to the Range Rover show last year we went to the Land Rover show so we're looking at range, looking at a couple of the Range Rovers Land Rovers mostly the Range Rovers uh, that would fit our family better and uh, we're looking at potentially a Volvo or some other vehicle we're looking at possibly buying but we're definitely looking at buying a European make and model vehicle so that we'll get away from having to be concerned about finding special dealers. Uh, when I went to the Volvo dealership, I asked them, I said, hey, can we get this serviced? And like, yeah, you get a service anywhere. And normally that doesn't matter, but when you can't get your vehicle serviced easily and or fully, or if there's a problem with it, that becomes a serious issue. It's always in the back of your mind, it's nagging on you that if I have a problem with my vehicle at any point, I may have you know a hard time getting it repaired. So I just want you to be aware of that if you're thinking about shipping a vehicle over. Okay guys, that's it, it's just kind of a short video. If you have any other questions about the whole process of moving from the UK, moving, I'm sorry, moving from the US to the UK, or moving in any other direction, um, reach out to me, send me an email, uh, drop a comment down below, I try to answer all of those. And if you know, if it's something that a lot of people ask about, and if I'm, if I'm knowledgeable on the topic, I'll try to do a video on it. Okay, so until the next time, take care.